Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Strife Sanctum. And as has been a tendency for a long time now, I've tended to say on the more straightforward, the more mature, the more, um, I, I guess you would consider it dignified, I, I don't know, the, the darker, heavier material, the stuff with, you know, death and dystopia and all this stuff, and we'll get back to that eventually, but eventually I'm gonna have to start digging into the backlog of comedies that I've seen, and, you know, there are a few that I still remember liking and things like that, and some of them are, you know, the, the dumb harem comedies and the romantic errors and shit. We've got something here. When I'm thinking of, like, comedies as far as Japanese anime goes... There is no comparison. This is the best one that I've seen. This is easily the best writing I've ever seen. My guess is it's a lot of the... Just a lot of riffing on itself and making fun of itself. And just the sheer audacity of a show to take what has become a, a trope in... You know, other worlds, parallel worlds, and what is known as isekai. And we've talked about isekai before. But basically taking that five or ten year trope that started with Sword Art Online and such, and basically saying, how do we make the absolute shit out of it? How do we just take anything that we can and throw shit at the wall and see what sticks? And then have the actors and whatnot have fun while doing so you end up with something called Konosuba. And I will try to pronounce this somehow. So bear it in mind, let's... I will give this a shot. So, it's Konosuba, otherwise known as Konosubarashi Sekai ni Shuku Fuku... Oh. God's blessings on this wonderful world. Otherwise known as Konosuba. Yes, I know Japanese. I don't care. Um, or I know enough about pronunciations that I'm okay with it. It's not perfect, but I'll I'll live with it. Anyway, I'm going to stay calling it Konosuba, if it's every, if it's fair to everybody else. Anyway, as far as Konosuba is concerned, it's fucking hilarious. I knew that this was a big deal a few years ago, um, but it's one of those things, like, I, I tend to, like, avoid hype. In general, I'm, I'm not one of these people that's, like, going overboard to watch, like, the the most popular thing or the thing everybody talks about as being the greatest goddamn thing in the world. And, you know, I tend to wait, like, three to six months to a year, let the hype die down, and go back to something and say, you know what, I'll make up my own goddamn mind to this thing. And sure enough konosuba is one of those things that everybody knows and everybody i would think likes for one reason or another the, the biggest thing is the fact that almost half of the shows that exist now are some form of some guy dies or some guy's transported it's usually a video game or it's some you know goblin slayer kind of world like dnd &D, yeah you know that sort of thing and you're transported to a parallel world and it's you know it was rife to be made fun of eventually, and you get some things like comedies, you know, comedies but some serious backdrops. We've talked about Goblin Slayer, we've talked about Shield Hero, sort of things like that, but we're in the darker vein but still had some comedy. This has no such illusions. This one is pure comedy for the sake of it, and everybody, you know, in this, I of course watch the English version because that's all what I, always what I do. Just making the absolute, just taking the absolute piss out of anything you could think of when it comes to these um, tropes, and it has a cast of like four main characters, plus you know three or four supporting ones that show up a lot. But these four characters work so well off each other, and the comedy is so well done that as defined as these characters are, you don't sit there and go, "I'm sick of seeing them." You're never sick of watching how stupid this all gets. You're never sick of, like, seeing what kind of trope they'll just take an axe to. Or, in this case, blow one up, as one character would do. 
But yes, we'll we'll get to all of that. And this won't be a spoiler review, because it's a comedy. There's not really a bunch to spoil, other than like how they solve these solutions in the dumbest way possible. But you gotta start with the characters, because this show is all about these characters and these actors kind of just making shit up as they go. And I'm sure that has to do with the Japanese version, but I'm going from the English version, so bear that in mind, of course. Um, but we'll start with the main character, Kazuma Sato. He was voiced by Arne Pantoja. When I was reading up, because some of these, like, some of these actors I've listened to for 5, 10, 20 years, right? This one I didn't even know. I looked him, I looked up the character sheet, and then I saw him, and he said, Reno from Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I kind of stared at the screen for a minute. I was like, oh, okay then. Now I know why I like this guy. I was not expecting that. So two totally different characters with this guy playing just completely straight, I guess. But Kazuma is the Isekai neat who gets transported to another world. This one I will spoil because this is how he gets there because it happens right at the beginning. The the standard trope is you get run over by a car. Some people, they fall off a thing. Like, I remember a sentence in a bookworm, a girl fell off a bookshelf and died. Some people, they just dream this whole thing while they're dying. More often than not, it's they get run over by a car because they're a teenage, they're a teenage dork and they're either trying to save somebody or whatever's going on. So, knowing that this is a comedy they come up with a different plan. So, Kazuma tries to go buy some stupid video game, I guess, and he walks outside, sees a girl playing in the street, and he thinks there's a car coming. Tries to push the car out of the way, or at least tell the, tell the girl something's going on. He goes into the middle of the street. As it gets closer, it's a tractor. <laughs> he doesn't realize it's a fucking tractor in the middle of the street. And just dies from shock. And I think even the kid just laughs at him saying it's so pathetic. But not as pathetic as waking up in the parallel limbo ruled in this case by Aqua. And Aqua is voiced by Faye Mata. I knew her first from Be the Beginning, which is a show on Netflix. I'll get to that once I get to the second season. Um, But in this, Aqua is... A goddess, a goddess of water. She's revered as this goddess of, you know, turning things undead, you know, the whole cleric thing from D&D. So, you know, the nice lady. So how does, how does Aqua protest? Well, she comes across as a snooty bitch, because of course she does. A snooty bitch who doesn't wear underwear. Like you do. And... Her whole bargain is that she will take him to this other world. It's not really explained what the name of the world is. It might be, but it doesn't matter. It's it's a fantasy world. It's the D and D alt you know alternate reality that every anime does. If it if it's not a if it's not a sci fi world or a video game, it's a it's a typical fantasy world. So, uh, she says, hey, while you're there, we will let you take one thing. And Cosmoth sits there and thinks for a minute while he's in shock. He ends up taking Aqua herself to this alternate alternate world. And because of that, she is pissed. And her snooty side and her angry side, she just starts mumbling everywhere. She starts crying everywhere. She starts screaming everywhere. And, and Faye obviously does a great job of this. She's just screaming, and every time she's shaking at the goddamn screen. You've probably seen the meme of her just shaking the, the you know, with the googly eyes and shit. Or the pause screen, and she's just screaming. And she's just, <laughs> why are you doing this to me? It's so stupid. You know, that kind of character. And... Because it's a fantasy world with magic and whatever, you have to have, you know, skills and classes and shit. Um, Aqua is already ready-made to be a cleric and a, and a priest and all that shit, and she's good at it, but she's not great at everything. So Kazuma has to come across as, well, what do you want to be? Sword and board? Do you want to be a thief? Do you want to be a whatever? He just decides, I'll be adventurer. And... 
fair play to the show for pretty much deciding to be the perviest dork in existence that has no actual fighting capability because Sato is just everything. He he runs into a lady who's a thief and she says, hey, I'll teach you a skill. And he just learns steal and then steals her underwear like you do. But that's not going to pay the bill. So they start, you know, bricklaying. They start building houses to make a living in this fantasy world where they're supposed to be killing devil kings and shit. So they realize they need to go questing, but their skill set kind of sucks. So they need some help, and they find help in two specific places, mostly at the same time. The first one is probably the most popular character, uh, Megamine, voiced by Erica Mendez, who I know is Roth Talia from Shield Hero. She was Eleanor Hume in Tales of Berseria, so I know her voice anywhere. The cool thing about Megamine is that she is a mage, and she is wholly devoted to one spell. If I tried to say that spell the way she says it, I would fail. My voice does not do that. But I think you can know by the title of this video, and basically anything, if you've seen anything about Konosuma, you know that she loves explosions. She just loves explosions. Her whole identity is about explosions. Her whole gimmick is explosion. Even more so than the whole family line that apparently she comes from doesn't explain why the fuck she's a chunibuo or whatever the fuck. The, the, the chunibuo, how do I fucking explain it? Um, Fantastical weirdos who love dark shit. That trope. I've seen it in like Danganronpa and a show called Love Chunibuo and other delusions and other shit. And I'll get to that eventually. But she's basically the main character of that chunibuo show as a mage who loves exploding things. That's basically what this is so she joins the party because she wants somebody to tang, tang along with and protect her because her whole thing is she only knows one spell she learned nuke so she doesn't have fire fire two fire three nope no ice no no whatever no elemental bullshit she just knows explosion and she knows how to do explosion and she loves doing explosion. The catch is, because it's such a crazy spell, she can only do it once a day. So, turns out that the best tactic for Kazuma and Aqua is just to, to dick around in fights against toads and shit. Wait for, um, wait for, uh... Megamine to cast the spell and then blow the shit to smithereens. There are other ways they finish fights, but the majority of the time, she's the one that takes care of the issue. But she has to get carried home. So, there are other things about Megamine, but suffice it to say, she's Explosion Girl, she's awesome, and it's great. And then they're joined by one other character known as Darkness. And when I heard who did Darkness's voice in the English version, I just sighed laughing and just couldn't help myself. Because anybody who knows me knows that I've listened to Christina V in pretty much anything in the last five or ten years, specifically Velvet from Tales of Berseria. And I remember watching this exactly like right after I finished Tales of Berseria. So I'm sitting there going, you're Velvet, this crazy psychopathic, sociopathic murder hobo. And then you're also playing Darkness. This masochistic, just voluptuous, crappy sword lady girl who always wants to be violated. I will get to that in a minute. Um... But yes, it's a dichotomy of, of characters, which makes it all the better, because she plays them as great as you can imagine. But anyway, Darkness is exactly that. She's a paladin, and at first glance, she's, you know, Beatrix from Final Fantasy IX, the sort of lady that can kick every ass in the planet. But then you realize that she can't. Because apparently she put all her stats in vitality, didn't put any in strength, and can't hit the broad side of a barn. So her strength and dexterity are shit, her charisma is off the charts, and yet for some reason she can't be hurt. Or, more to the point, Darkness's whole thing is that being hurt turns her on? Question mark? 
no, there's no, 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 no question mark. No, no, no. This is Konosuba. We're not questioning anything. That's exactly what happens. Rip off her clothes. Show off her breasts. Just do whatever. Put her in terrible situations. Darkness doesn't care. And sometimes she'll protest, but you know in reality she really wants it. Or at least that's what she claims she wants. So, obviously... You have Aqua being the weird, crazy bitch that's trying to complain of the fact that she's there because she doesn't want to be there. You've got Megamine, who wants to blow shit up, but can only blow shit up once a day, but it's kind of straight-laced under normal circumstances. Then you have Darkness, who's just all over the place. She's devoted to everybody else's safety, but at the cost of her own sanity when it comes to, hey, just rip off my clothes and get rid of me and violate me, and I'm going to get in trouble, aren't I? But that's how it's going to be. That's how you say it. You can't talk about darkness any other way than that. So you have these four morons of different different descriptions in this fantasy world. So what is this whole gimmick that they're supposed to be? Well, it's supposedly these devil kings or these devil kings generals we don't know we assume it's these super powerful beings and every you know three or four episodes ago you start remembering oh okay there's a dullahan you blow up a dullahan's castle and he comes and fights the shit out of you and then whatever or uh, one of them is a is a lich okay one of them is an undead one of them's a whatever that's not really the point the point is to kill them so that the, that Aqua and Kazuma can go home. But um, reality is this is a series of unfortunate events caused by their stupidity. And they just go on quests and make some money or they lose some money or they get arrested and then tried in a court of law for their stupidity. The whole point of the show is it's a basic sorted board fantasy anime from another world but with characters who can just make fun of themselves and do and you just want to see it unfold i think the episode that encapsulates this so well was an episode later in the season where it, i'm shocked that nobody's ever thought of this maybe they did in the D D campaign but never in like a mainstream anime before like this is such an awesome concept um, Kazuma is walking into a bar with some dudes and, you know, it's not the typical adventuring bar where they get assignments and shit. This is the nighttime bar and it's run by Succubi. So you can already see this is going to start very well. So they walk into the Succubus bar, nightclub, whatever. And of course they're hot, voluptuous ladies and they're basically saying adventurers need relief. And we are going to provide that. So it's basically a nightclub and a strip club all rolled into one under the guise of succubi invading dreams. How that was never a thing in any other show but this one, I'll never know. But I'm glad somebody thought of it because it's something you would think about if you were in a fantasy setting and thought, well, we want a strip club, but we don't know how to. Do oh, we got it. Or how do we get out of this situation but our characters are so stupid they don't know how to, oh we got it they come up with solutions to problems they didn't fix but for some reason are able to be the solutions to the problems so this show is about finding ways for megamine to explode shit this is an episode this is a show finding ways for darkness to rip her clothes off this is a show designed to find ways for aqua to scream at the top of her lungs every minute and kazuma just sitting there either being the cause of it or watching it all f unfold and again it's all about those characters if you don't like fan service eh, they don't harp on it but maybe in darkness or aqua's case i think one of the characters, Wiz, like has the giant breasts thing. The the adventure lady has giant breasts, but you know it's played for comedy. Like you know what you're getting into. But the fact that Aqua doesn't wear any underwear and you just it's just a thing. She doesn't harp on it. She just doesn't. She just wears a short frilly skirt, and you can see her ass all the time. Or Darkness just stands there and wants to be molested more or less by cabbages don't ask me it's what they made up 
this is one of my favorite shows because it has no qualms about coming up with weird shit for the sake of the story. They've come up with a couple of seasons already. And again, I think every episode is its own thing, and I think everybody should see its own thing. There's no real negatives to speak of, because why would I think there are negatives in this? A lot of times when you get into anime, it, it tends to be either that Japanese style of like romantic comedy situation. It's like, oh no, they're seeing each other, but they're the, you know, the three's company gag, where one girl's in this situation, but it's this. Or it's like a really stiff version of comedy that doesn't work. This is a kind of like universal comedy which i think would work for anybody but also speaks to the hey i've played D before hey i've played a video game before let's make fun of all these tropes and figure out ways that these four idiots can just survive in this other world so it's like if you've played D D or you've gone through any sort of show like this, but you want something that is really taking the piss out of it and taking a baseball bat to all of the, oh my god, it's super serious and we've got to come up with a new situation. And No, they're just sitting there having fun. It's like they smoked something and then they said, okay, what about this? It's freaking hilarious. They released two seasons already, and they're releasing a movie, and it's, it is one of the most popular things. I don't think you need me to tell you how popular this fucking show is, but if you needed me to express just how lovely it is, then I will. I did. And, and again, it's one that I've seen a couple of times. It's one I want to see more of. I, wanted, I just want more of these characters. Because even with the second season done, and probably on Crunchyroll now that Funimation and Verve have kind of consolidated fo together, you know, Crunchyroll is now kind of the go-to. I'm imagining Konosuba and its subbed or dubbed versions are on there. There's really no excuse not to see this show. It's one of my top five favorite shows. It's probably my favorite comedy, and I've loved certain comedies. It takes... A certain type of comedy to get me interested because of all the fan servicey tropes and all that, and that shit's all there. But if you want something that is light, easy to watch, easy to make fun of, and easy to just fuck around with, and just see a bunch of explosions, you can just do that. So there's my explosion for for today. Not great. I'm not doing it justice. I don't fucking care. It's an episode about Konosuba. I'm making fun of it, and we should just have fun. So this is, show is all about, I want to have fun. I want to have fun talking about it. I want to have fun watching it again. And I want people to have fun if you see a darkness or an aqua or whatever or anything. Or you want to see them. I've I've seen it at conventions and just sat down and rewatched these fucking... Because it's so fucking good. There's no reason... Not to see Kono Suba at least once. And I guarantee you, you're going to just laugh your ass off. Speaking of which, I need, to go, I need to go watch it again. Anyway, that'll do it for me. And next week should be the Anime Detour Rundown. We've got way, way too much to talk about there, but I'll wait till we actually go through it. That's going to be late March. So at time of recording, it's probably two or three weeks away. But when I actually do get to it, it's going to be, hopefully, I don't have the um, um, mask mandates. Minnesota's starting to get rid of mask mandates, so I might be able to put on my full Robotnik suit and mustache after all. That'd be awesome. Imagine trying to ask a bunch of guests while I'm trying to be a Robotnik cosplayer. That'd be pretty funny. Um, but yes, we have that. Um, the week after Anime Detours episode is going to be Chrono Cross to coincide with its subsequent release on a PS4. Hooray! We're getting we are getting Chrono Cross again and I'm ready to just tear it to shreds. I don't hate it, but there are things I do hate about it, but I will keep a measured approach. I I, have, I haven't been that much of a bitch lately. I I'm allowed to to bitch about something, aren't I? Anyway, Chrono Cross is 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 the week after that. And then I believe Ergo Proxy. Ergo Proxy's next. So we're veering from Konosuba back into the serious shit. And Ergo Proxy is weird. Ergo Proxy is strange. And I sort of liked it. 
but don't understand it. And I guess that's kind of the point. You're not supposed to, but you're supposed to question it, but whatever. So we're going from Madoka Magica down into this weird rabbit hole of Konosuba just to piss ourselves and have fun. Going back to Ergo Proxy. What a weird dichotomy that is. And then, because I finished it recently, Persona 5 Royal. Imagine me probably taking two hours or three hours trying to talk about Persona 5. I might do that. My voice might die trying, but I will talk about Persona 5 eventually. But that's our setup for the next few weeks. So I'm good for a month or two. But I will see everybody next time. Go watch Konosuba and laugh your ass off. Citizen Strive, signing off.